Hey guys, Harper Juski here, and today we're going to be looking over how I record and um, pretty much just get any of my videos from my games, my voice, and the in-game audio, and all that just together into one simple video for you guys to watch. There's going to be three parts to this. There's going to be um, pretty much recording, there's going to be editing, and then there's going to be editing and exporting. There's a little end part there for ending the you know series. So. First off, um, if you're recording from a separate hard drive, it's much better than recording to the same hard drive that you're playing off of. So if you are not really computer savvy, if you have a computer that only has one hard drive in it, which is usually what computers have, if you're recording to the same hard drive that you're also playing a game off of, that the game is located in, it's going to have trouble loading and doing stuff that has to use a hard drive. Let's say someone is walking towards you as you're reading a book. You're reading Harry Potter, you know, uh, The Goblet of Fire, and it's a really, really good book, and you're really interested in it, so you're reading it really hard. Someone comes over to you and says, hey, um, can you help me on this essay? Can you write this essay for me as you're reading that book? It's kind of hard, right? Reading a book while writing at the same time? Your mind really couldn't do that without going from one to another. It couldn't do it at the same time. You can't multitask like that. So, that's the same for a hard drive. A hard drive cannot read while it is writing. It has to go read, write, read, write, read, write, read, write as fast as it can to be able to do that much work in a short amount of time. So let's say you're playing Arma and you're flying a plane over a small village of buildings. Because of optimization in that game, the buildings will have less detail from farther away and higher detail as you get closer to them. So a building will just be a simple square from a mile away, but then it will be a square with high textures and bricks that are 3D popping out of it. The roof is going to be popping out of it as well. The insides of the building are going to be loaded and all the textures and objects and stuff is going to be loaded. So your hard drive has to read to be able to present a texture in your game. It has to read, it has to be read from the game. Um, and so if you're walking up to a building, the, the pretty much the processor says, Hey hard drive, um, I need this to go to the video RAM. So it says, okay, I need this texture of a small box to go to the video RAM. And the hard drive will read that and give it to the video RAM. But if you're also recording at the same amount of time, that recording is going to be going into the hard drive. So the hard drive says, okay, I'm, I'm trying to read all this, but I'm also trying to write an essay at the same time. So it's quite challenging. So the first thing I want you to do if you're going into video editing, if you're going to be a YouTuber um, that plays video games live, you want a separate hard drive. Now, what I would suggest is going on to Newegg.com right here. You can go to Newegg. I'll show you the way to get to where I am. You can go to Components and then Storage. You go to Hard Drives, Desktop Hard Drives. And then here we are, desktop hard drives. Um, five terabytes, you don't really need that. You need like a one terabyte to f like a minimum of 500 gigabytes. You also want to have one that's 7200 RPM, like this one says right here. I can't really highlight that well. Um, but 7200 RPM is what you want to have. That's a good speed. You don't really want the 5600s. Uh, you want a 7200. That's the best. Um, now, as well as having a 5200, or sorry, a 7200 RPM, you want to have a lot of space, so make sure you have 500 gigabytes or above. If you're going into YouTubing, I would suggest a one terabyte at first. One terabyte is definitely enough to, mo to host most of your videos, um, as long as you delete them about every few, like, I delete my videos every, let's say, three weeks or four weeks. Um, but for you, you're probably not going to be uploading or recording or just have a lot of videos like I do. I have videos from a year ago still on my hard drive today. So you don't really need one that's like 3 terabytes like mine. Um, I have a 3 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, and it's awesome. So that's what I suggest is getting a separate hard drive to record your stuff to. If you want to go look up a video, a separate video for installing your stuff with, then you can go do so. But um, part 2 of part 1 is... Also, recording softwares. You really, really need a good software to be able to record. I have Fraps, MSI Afterburner, and also DX Tori. Fraps is a good one. Fraps is, I don't think it's open right now. Let me go open it. Fraps is really good, um, but it's very, very simplified. It's a good starting one. I would say it's good for starting simply because it's so simple and it pretty much exports a codec that's visible in all programs Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas, Movie Maker, they'll all take it. Uh, my first videos actually used to come out on Movie Maker, and then I moved to Adobe Premiere once I got a little bit more professional. Um, 
So Fraps is good, but if you have a small hard drive, it's gonna export uncompressed video. Compression makes things smaller and lessens the quality of them. So a video for YouTube is usually compressed by like 60%, no joke. YouTube destroys the quality of videos because they can't hold all that data. And, and I understand why they destroy it because they have billions of videos on YouTube. Um, and to hold all that, that video quality, it, it just would be impossible, physically impossible for them to do. Honestly, like <laughs> you try to hold every single uncompressed video on YouTube, you couldn't do that with all the hard drives on the earth, I guarantee. So, um, they compress the videos a lot. So you do want to have a one that's compressed a little bit. You know, it, it's not really reasonable to record a 100% quality thing if it's even going to go down to 60. So, Fraps does record 100%, but you don't really need that. It is, I mean, also costs, I think, I don't know how much Fraps is actually worth. Um, Fraps is worth something. I don't think it's free. Um, Secondly, there's MSI Aftermurder. MSI Aftermurder is free, and it comes with any MSI, MSI graphics card or anything like that by default. It's pretty good. Um, it, it's actually very, very good. It's just that the only thing is, is that you don't, when you, when you export the video, if your game goes under 30 frames per second while, it's, while you're playing a game, then the audio and the video will desync in that recording. So let's, so let's say I'm playing Arma, I'm in a big operation, and I'm recording a video of this awesome operation that's happening. If that operation, which on all computers, Arma will always go under 30 FPS at some point in time. It, that's just Arma. Arma is gross in optimization, and it's usually super intensive on the CPU, and it's just not optimized for multi-core type of stuff. So um, that gross optimization will go under 30 FPS from time to time and your video will just desync. It will go off the rails. Your video will go five seconds ahead of your audio. So somebody will talk and then five seconds later, the audio will actually say, oh, hi, how are you doing? You know, it's it's really odd. So MSI, MSI Afterburner, I almost said MI ass. Um, <laughs> MSI Afterburner is awesome. But for recording things like Arma 3, Arma 2, any game that goes under 30 FPS, any game that's laggy for you, it's not the best choice. Honestly, it's just, it's so frustrating to finish a video that was two hours long of an operation, go back to it, and then realize all of it is desynced, and that you would have to manually probably spend three hours trying to sync all the video and audio back up manually. It sucks, trust me. I've done it before, and I was like, I'm not going to do this again for a single video. I have to get something else. So... I suggest DX Story. DX Story is one that I've been using in the past few weeks, and it's awesome. It never desyncs, and it will perfectly record under 30 frames per second. And also, the video file size of all these videos is really, really small. It's honestly just a great overall program. It is, I think, the most expensive out of this this list, but honestly, definitely worth it if you're going into YouTube and going to be a professional YouTuber, gamer, st something like that. If you're going to be an operator like Operator Drewski, then you got to operate with the best operational gear in your operations, like DX Story. So DX Story, I'm going to show you my settings here. Once you get DX Story, um, I have a log Lagerith Losses Codec. That's one of the best codecs, on, in my opinion. has great compression, great quality, and small file sizes. So in here, I usually do multi-threading because my processor has lots of different threads, has eight. Um, and then also I set the mode to YV12. You don't really need anything that's more high quality than that. Again, YouTube will butcher the hell out of your video. So you need to make sure that your quality isn't at 100% or you're just going to use more hard drive space and your hard drive is going to be slow. Again, talking about hard drives, you can click to this and you're going to set your folder of where you want your videos to export to. Um, so what you want to do is make sure that your hard drive is fast enough. So a 7200 RPM hard drive like this, you want to have one that also has a good write speed. You want to go look up the statistics for that hard drive and be able to see its write speed and its read speed average and peaks or whatever. Um, peaks aren't really that great. You want to look at the average pretty much. So average write speed for this is 139. You can click on the hard drive folder and see this is Z. So in my computer here, it's going to be recording Z only or recording to Z only. Um, so the Z hard drive, I'm gonna test it right here just by clicking this button and clicking run. And you can see there's my live megabytes per second speed right there. What you wanna have is something that's over 80 megabytes per second, 80, 80 megabytes per second. So uh, for 1080p 30 FPS, 80 is fine. 
Um, but if you're going into 60, I would recommend like 110 or above. I don't really know exactly the perfect amount, but I would recommend something like 110 or above. You can still run 1080p 30fps with um, something like even 70 write speed. I used to actually run my, my YouTube channel off of something that was like 60 somehow, and I don't know how that recorded on there, but it would just fluctuate a lot, and it would make the audio and video desync and stuff like that. It was annoying. Um, so with something like this, you want to have a fast hard drive that can take all that. So with this, you can also set your video settings, your, I mean, sorry, your audio settings here. There's, you can set the different audio wavelengths you want to go into the video and you can, you know, this is my speaker, so any of my game audio is going to go through this speaker right here. Secondarily, my microphone. That's the micro, that's microphone you hear me through right now. This microphone will go through this um, second wavelength here, and any of this you can set uh, just different options here. Um, this option that I have checked right now is for CPU processing. That's because my, my CPU is a lot more powerful than my GPU. So my GPU is an R9270X. When I'm playing Arma at medium high settings with like a multiplayer server where there's a lot of people, a lot of things happening, it will run at 100%. It's not that bad that it's running 100%, but it will run at that because I have anti-aliasing at like 8x or something, and I want the game to be really, really smooth for my recording. So what I do is actually put that processing power into the CPU because my CPU, my i7-4770K, runs at like 30% whenever I'm recording. So that's what I do. I force it into the CPU and I make it where the CPU does all the work because my CPU, that's going to add like probably, I don't even know, 10% at most to the 4770K's workload. And the 4770K is water cooled, so I don't even need to worry about it getting too hot or something. Um, it's always running at like, like 46 Celsius or something like that crazy. So it's a pretty good hard drive, or sorry. <laughs> I'm 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 stupid. Pretty good processor. And so you want to you know, want to put the workload on the most powerful part of your computer. Um if you have eight threads, that's what I have right here. I have processing threads at eight. That means it's going to use all the threads. It's going to have the best optimization, fastest processing for your video. So, with all that word coming out of my mouth, that was a big breath. Um <laughs> you can also set your PCM and all this uh quality stuff here. I usually just set it to 16 bit 4400 hertz i think that's the maximum that youtube will actually play audio at i don't know if it might be 4800 i think it's 4400 though so that's what you want or sorry 44000 hertz um so that's pretty much my recording software now we're actually going to try to record some stuff and we're going to be able to see it in a replay so now we're going to record some stuff with Arma 3. I'm at the main menu, and let's say we're going to load in the editor. Let's just load into virtual reality so it loads the fastest. Um, so my game audio is also playing right now. I'm going to place a person down, and I'm going to load the game. It's still running? Okay, there we go. So now, as you can see, the different FPS counter in the top right. I'm going to click my recording hotkey, and it's not, re it's not going to record because it... <laughs> <laughs> mouse button left is now the new recording no num6 okay so num6 now I just clicked it so here we go recording recording testing one two three testing my audio now once we stop that recording we're gonna go out of Arma and go into my DX Tory folder which is this so you go to capture and we're gonna go down to the last Arma 3 I think I just passed it by a long shot um, the last Arma 3 file which is right here so as you can hear my voice isn't there. So, this is a thing that happens whenever you record with DX Story. It puts the game and voice audio in two different wavelengths. Usually VLC video player will not show this, but you need to export the two files to be able to open them in, in, in Adobe Premiere. So, with this I'm going to go kind of into the editing a little bit, but I'm not going to go too much into like cropping and doing all that stuff. I'm just going to show you how to extract both audio streams at the same time. You just right click on it and you go up to this extract audio stream. Then you can grab both your audio streams. You go into Adobe Premiere and you're going to grab all of this plus the video. Ooh, what did I just do? I copied it. Yes, I accidentally copied it. You're going to grab all of this plus the video and then move them into Adobe Premiere. So here we go, importing. And now these three things are in Adobe Premiere. So what we're going to do now is make sure that we're not going to import the audio. So I de click this. I'm going to move this in to the video away from my intro because my intro is going to be loud. And then I'm going to move both of the audios into the spaces below it. 
excuse me. So now that the audios are synced up. So num six, now I just clicked it. So here we go. Recording, recording, testing, one, two, three. Ten. So as you can see there, um, you can actually hear me talking. But if the game is too loud, let's say that first gunshot is too loud, then I can actually manually up here lower the amount of noise coming from audio one or audio two. So if my voice is too loud and you can't even hear the game, I can actually just lower my voice. So num six, now I just clicked it. So now my voice is lower than the game. If the game gets too loud, let's say I tested my microphone earlier in the Armor 3 operation and we were in a quiet area where there wasn't much happening. And then later on, we were in a big firefight, and I was saying, okay, guys, move up. Then maybe in that firefight, because there were so many guns firing, so many explosions happening, you couldn't even hear my voice. With this, you can actually adjust that at different points in time dynamically to make sure that your voice is very, very balanced with the video of the, or with the audio of the game at the same time. So that's a really, really important thing is making sure that you can have those two wavelengths to be able to actually edit the audio of both of them. You can do the same thing in Sony Vegas, but you don't have to export the two wavelengths like I did in the uh, files here. You don't have to extract the audio stream. Sony Vegas will automatically do it for you, which is really, really nice, but I don't know anything about Sony Vegas, so I have to go with Premiere. Um, so guys, that's pretty much recording. All the tips and tricks that I have for you is in this video. So anything that you need to ask any more than this video just ask me down in the comment section down below and I will be happy to help you out next episode will be video editing so I'm going to do basic editing in Adobe Premiere um, and yeah that's that's the video for today so I'll see you guys later um, keep watching some Operator Drewski videos and I'll see you next time